Good afternoon, everyone, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here to Titanic Belfast, a world leading tourist attraction that has welcomed in excess of 2 million visitors since it opened in 2012. We're just a few meters here from where the original Titanic was built. And it wasn't just a, magnific a magnificent ship, it was one of the most powerful symbols of what can be achieved when you create an ecosystem of excellence that brings together visionary entrepreneurs also designers, engineers, craftspeople, all manner of great talents and skills and availability of capital. And all that wrapped up in a supreme self-confidence of a city that comes from being on top of your game on a world stage. Now a century on, a booming Titanic quarter is a fantastic example of how far Belfast has progressed in the last 20 years since the Good Friday Agreement. We are a resilient city once again, it's a hotbed of all of those talents, ambition, visionaries, and the confidence of knowing that we're at the cutting edge of our industry, enjoying global recognition. And yes, we are that corner of Europe that has full access to the European market and the market of the United Kingdom, and that's unique. Leading the way with innovation in the creative industries here are Catalyst Inc, Belfast Met, and Queen's University, to name a few supporting our next generation's education, building the, uh, the knowledge and confidence to achieve. By a way of an example of this confident creativity, the nearby Titanic Studios are to the fore in the global film and television industry, hosting some of the world's biggest stars as we speak and putting Northern Ireland firmly on the map as a premier location for movie production. And I did hear that the one and only Hugh Grant is in our town this week. Keep your eyes out. As a Northern Ireland business leader, I was honoured to be appointed in 2017 to the role of Honorary Consul for Finland, charging with promoting economic, political and academic, as well as cultural relationships between Finland and Northern Ireland. Finland has long been a friend to this place. In 1998, uh, we had much support for our peace process from the people of Finland. So I was absolutely delighted to accept. Finland's willingness to embrace new ideas and innovative social constructs sets a great example for us here in Belfast, something we can also aspire to. Finland is renowned as one of the most innovative and prosperous nations in Europe today, and I firmly believe that a modern Northern Ireland has the potential to do the same. They have not been afraid to stray from the norm in their pursuit of excellence in education. We're talking about reform here in education, Finland did major reform 40 years ago. The transformative approach, transformative approach, sorry, has created a world leading system, not only fit for purpose for the Finnish economy, but also showing the way for many other smaller economies like ours that are battling with skill shortages and the brain drain. As I mentioned, Northern Ireland has achieved a lot with peace since the Good Friday Agreement two decades ago. However, we cannot be complacent. As business, political and civic leaders, we have a duty to push Northern Ireland to be the very best it can be, both economically and socially. Jobs and prosperity have been shown to be the best ingredients for embedding peace in post-conflict societies. So we must be restless in capitalising on our strengths and reinvigorate the confident ent entrepreneurial spirit of our past. We must learn from our friends in Finland and keep reinventing our society and our industries in the pursuit of economic excellence. In fact, it's our duty. So in the spirit of continuing links with Finland, I am delighted to welcome Pika Timonen, Mayor of Latte in Finland, the EU Green Capital of 2021. Something they never could have imagined of attaining just a few years ago. We're going to discuss and share lessons about how Lati transformed from an economically challenged region to a world leader in innovation, leading the way in neutralizing their carbon footprint. By way of setting the scene, we're going to show you a stunning short video from Lati, which I'm sure will strike a chord with all of our viewers.
Pika, greetings from Belfast. Thank you, and it was nice to see our video today. And I must ensure that today it's not dark and it's not cold. It's a very hot day here in Lahti today. Uh, well, you now in Belfast, it's a little bit warm, but it's never that hot here. We're always glad when we get the sunshine. It's so nice to see you again, my friend. And I've learned so much about what you're doing and, and you're very inspirational, but you've also got a good personal history and how you came through the business world and the political world. Maybe you just want to give a ba your background to our viewers. Well, uh, uh, that might be interesting for everyone. I'm, I've a, I have a background. I've been working both for uh, private sector. I've been a CEO for two companies, and but also for the government. I came uh, before I, I became a mayor of Lahti. I worked at the prime minister's office uh, for five years, and uh, and in Finland, cities can also choose so-called professional mayor. So that means that I'm not uh, directly elected by the people. But the uh, political, the city council elects the, the mayor they think it fit for the job. And that's how I was elected a little over three years ago to become the mayor of Lahti. So I have a, uh, even in Finland, it's not very typical to have a background both in a, in a public sector uh, and but also having being in a business life and then a CEO for two companies. And I think that's a real nice mix of skills that you bring together, obviously very different different environments, but certainly you can certainly bring expertise from both to the other. And um, it's really interesting learning about the history of Finland because not just with Lati and the correlation with the history of our own city here in Belfast, but Finland is around 100 years old. You had a massive civil war like us and you rebuilt from there. It's fascinating the similarities in our countries. Exactly. And we are also kind of a two corners, corners of Europe. And I I already said before that uh, I like the think about that we in as, and in Europe we uh, move forward as a as an old LP record, you know uh, the, the 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 further you go from the center the faster you move. Yes, I'm sure you were popular when you said that in Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did say that also in Brussels. It's been, in Brussels it's oh. maybe not that popular, but anyway. So so what I what but you, you have a good point. I think the even more today, different cities and regions and nations, uh, they make the decisions. They have, they, 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 they must uh, find a good strategies and, and a good actions how they move forward. But also, it's a, it's, it's the world is more open today. So it's not about distance that much. It's not about. Uh, other things that we used to consider important. Now it's very important what we, what what are our skills, what are our abilities, and also how we can move forward uh, and, and be choose the right things to develop. And you're absolutely right. In Finland, we are very proud of our education system because mm -hmm. that's the core of all success. That's uh, also my, my understanding. Yeah, and we're going to talk a little bit about the things that you're doing now and how you got this huge accolade um, for your city. But if you just take us back a little bit, because like, like Belfast, you're a big post-industrial area, high unemployment. You know, we were big in shipbuilding and various industries. And of course, the economy changed. And like you had a similar change in manufacturing, industrialization, and therefore, similarly to us, high unemployment, you know, a little bit of an outlier in terms of where mm. you were uh, geographically. Um, and that's that's so similar to here. So talk us about the journey. I mean, I, I know that, for example, your lake was one of the dirtiest lakes yeah. in Europe. And now it's the one that I think it's the cleanest lake in Europe. But tell us about that journey through from that post-industrialization to get where you are today. Yeah, the city is still in, in trans transformation. And that's been the story of Lahti for already quite a long time. So after the Second World War, let's say first 40, 50 years, city was very successful. Industries flourished and uh, there were jobs and, uh, and the city grew rapidly. And then late, late 1980s, it already started to slow down. And in the beginning of uh, 90s, it all collapsed. The city, kind of the industries really uh, we lost lots of jobs. We lost jobs that never came back. And the industries were, let's say, old fashioned or were not able to uh, renew themselves. So Lahti must 
must found must find a new way to, to move forward. In the same time, we the people of the city really uh, said that the 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 status of the environment was not very good. We are the, it's, we are a lakeside city, 120,000 people and 200,000 as an urban region. And, and the lake was, as you said, the most polluted in Finland. And people said, we cannot live like this. That was the kind of the result of the industries, that the lake was uh, dest basically destroyed and, and it, it, it smelled, uh, the, it, you know, you couldn't swim, you couldn't use the water. Uh, it was uh, uh, just people were said, we can't live like this. So, so sit the people, cities, businesses, everybody, put their act together and started to clean the lake. And that was already in, a, in a 35 years ago. And today we enjoy a clean lake. We can eat the fish. It's excellent, by the way. We swim. We enjoy evenings, lakeside. Uh, we, can, we can really get the benefits of a be beautiful nature where the city is located. But that was the start of the people really very, in a very concrete way realized that we can change when we are changing and we are making environmental actions we make the city better and yes we can do it it's a very tangible result even today that people it was not somebody from who came from outside it was not some funding from elsewhere but it was this city which was suffering that time that did the job and how do you and how do you get because it's clear from talking to you this isn't about a government policy it isn't about a group of officials at city hall how do you get your community your citizens your people together to have that ambition well first first uh, first of all it was uh, it was uh, little by little uh, new goals were set and e and they became more amb ambitious and more long term year by year and and last last 20 years the city's environmental goals have been very um, ambitious and very long term for example our climate program we already agreed in 2000 and if i remember 2009 very ambitious goals to cut our emissions so already 13 12 13 years ago and we have now of, of course much further but but the the, the there are two key things I, I, might, I might say. One is the people understand that actually this is creating a new future for a city, that we, we can build a basis for something new, not even very clearly knowing what that might be, but understanding we can follow, there's a path we can follow. And, and, and secondly, we, are, we have done a big job to normalize or our environmental programs and actions. And what I mean by, about normalizing, I mean that it's not kind of a separate part of developing a city. It's, 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 the, it's, it's a normal way of making a city better. So it, it doesn't mean that not even today, we don't have a city strategy here mm. and then an environmental policy or strategy here. They are all and combined. I, I think that's a really good point because I think so many people see it as a separate thing instead yep. of that it is something that should run across all things. And by normalizing it, you also got some of your, what I'll call your, your city's heroes involved, yep. didn't you? Tell us about that. Well, if, uh, if a mayor says something about environmental programs, people say, yeah, that's the mayor talking. And if politici other city politicians or uh, experts say something, people say, okay, that's an expert talk and, and, and then move on. Uh, we have used a lot of our local uh, community and our heroes to, 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 to promote and, and also to help the people to, to feel that they are part of the change. For example, ice hockey is a big thing in Finland. It's our football. And we have a huge, our team is very good and plays in the Premier League in Finland. So the captain of the ice hockey team uh, talks to people and say, our team is dedicated to be the world's first carbon neutral professional team. And we as players, we are dedicated to do this and we as young men understand that this is important and we have no problem uh, working with this. So they are talking with their audiences and say, you can do this too. And, uh, and, uh, and, and that's very important that it's not me, but it's, it's the local sports heroes. Also our, as you saw from the video, our symphony orchestra, which is excellent. Uh, is the world's first carbon neutral symphony orchestra. So 
communicating and, and having a dialogue with different people and using different voices in the community has been very important. And, you know, translating that between the heroes saying it and the city officials saying it and the children, I guess, getting it, getting it early in education. And, and you obviously reformed your education system a long time ago, but you're really driving it through education, aren't you? Yeah, children are uh, in our... Uh, the, now when we are the European Green Capital this year, I think the most crucial element has been our great educational programs and, and the role of children. We have a lot of different environmental programs in our schools and already actually in our, our daycare centers, they have environmental programs. And we call our children environmental agents. So they collect the data and they make observations in the environment. And we really collect and analyze that data, what children collect. But there's also another aspect. When, uh, when our school children learn in school what they can do and how they, for example, should uh, uh, recycle different materials in their home. When they go home, they tell their parents, hey, what you are doing? This is what we should be doing. And when children say, parents say, okay, we I'm listen. They, 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 you listen. Yes, yes that's we, how it works. Yes. The children definitely <laughs> like to tell us how we should be doing things and scold us. And it's, it's just right because they're more in tune. They're, the, the younger generation are just so much more in tune with, I think, with the environment and climate. Yeah. At what stage did you think, okay, we can go for this EU green city? When, when did you think you could start to work towards that and get that accolade? That was four years ago. Our environmental director, a very uh, talented uh, lady called Sara Vauramo, she figured it out that we might have a chance. And so we first sent an application and in the first round we already did pretty well. And then the second round we were in a final and almost already got it. And then many peop people said that uh, we don't, you know, it's so, so, so frustrating to lose. But we said third time lucky. So we decided to do it once again. I was there also to say, hey, we just do it better this time. And then we won. And we are now the smallest city in Europe. You have to be, in order to be an applicant, you already have to be a city of over 100,000 people. So we are now the smallest, the northernmost, and actually the most easternmost city in Europe who has won this title and only one city in Europe every year is the holder of the of the title European Green Capital so you can imagine how proud and happy we are here in Laht. Oh it's it's such a great achievement and maybe one day Belfast will be knocking on your door for it. Well we, we would be happy to collaborate with <laughs> Belfast and we already set our eyes to next target which is the we are now quite convinced that we are carbon neutral city already by 2025 and that's tomorrow. That's amazing, that's amazing. And uh, in achieving that, I think a lot of people don't realize what that actually means for the economy. Some people seem to have the idea that by achieving these targets, that some way you're going to put industry backwards. But in fact, it, it opens up a whole host of opportunities for your economy, doesn't it? That's an excellent point and we have only or let's say last one or two years realized how important that is. When you create a carbon neutral city and when you have a very advanced environmental programs, you also create a very competitive uh, landscape and, and uh, for, for businesses and very competitive, you give competitive edge to certain businesses who can use uh, green, clean energy uh, our heating, for example, our central heating system is already free from all fossil fuels and it's zero emission, uh, etc. So businesses are actually even more advanced than with the public opinion today. They understand that this is where the world is moving. Mm -hmm. and, and now, basically, with every new business, we are discussing about investing or, 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 or making the business bigger in Lahti region they all know this and they all point out that this is one of the reasons why they talk with us. And by the way, this is a very happy day. You just, re just heard an hour ago that we are a home for a company called Kempower, which is the making the chargers for uh, electric traffic. Yeah. And they are now growing in a very rapid 500% growth. <laughs> and, and they just, Today announced that we had to close down a bus factory, and today they said 
no problem. We will take over the old bus factory and start construct, start building a lot of uh, electric car chargers for the future development. And your position as mayor is a little bit different to how it works here where we are. So I know you have a huge budget of a billion euro a year. Mm. I think our, our uh, the head of our city hall, uh, <laughs> our city council, Suzanne Wiley, would be delighted to have a budget of a, a, of a million even euro, never mind pounds. Um, that means you get to really affect and change. And you can be, you can speak to a company like that and say, hey, don't worry about it. This, this location where the buses are, we'll make it happen for you quickly. We can do that. You're able to be nimble, but you've got quite a lot of power with that type of budget to make things happen. Well, yes, the city's Finnish system is very in interesting. Our uh, municipalities are very economically independent. We have our own income tax that is actually bigger than the government income tax. And, and, but we also have our very large responsibilities to, to run different services and, and, and also have the, the economic uh, development of the, of the city and region is in, very much in the hands of, of municipalities. Mm -hmm. So that means our mayor is also a CEO for a, a quite big organization. I have, we have thousands of workers and our budget is, as you already said, pretty close to 1 billion euros. Uh, so, so we, when the companies are thinking about investing or, or, or different activities in our city, the city is always in the same table. And we are talking for right now, for example, we're talking about the several companies. If they do this, then we will rebuild this road or we'll <laughs> provide some energy networks or something like that. So it's always a negotiation. And when you're talking to these companies that are looking to come and invest in your area, be they indigenous companies or um, international mm. companies, uh, is it a big deal to them that you can say, OK, we're going to be carbon neutral by 2025? Is that a big pull? Well, if you think about our past, we didn't have anything 40 years ago. The city of basically old industries gone. I know Belfast knows all about this yes. when, when what happens. And, and it's so nice, even we, we still have a long way to go, but today we have something special. We have something to provide for the businesses. We, we can talk the same language that they do. And, 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 and we can also say we have a new university, which is also very much in line with the, their specialties, our energy, water and air technical university. So we have also linked them to the same development. So it's a completely different situation than we had 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, when today we can really provide them a very special environment where they can, what they can utilize and boost their own business. Yeah, and we see around the world with big corporates that more than ever, they're looking at those, now they're called ESG goals, but they're looking at corporate social responsibility, they're looking at environment, climate, and they mm -hmm. have to prove to their investors that actually, you know, they take these things seriously. And we've seen that in the press even over the last yeah. couple of days, that companies have to, not just seem to be, but they have to take it seriously. And by investing in a town like Latte, and I hope I pronounced that right, because I did practice well. it. <laughs> I hope, you know, they're coming and investing and they can tick that box and say, we're in a place that's, that's carbon neutral by 2025 and we can capitalize on that. I hope we have many business leaders like you today saying that the same thing, very same thing. But, but yes, we have, uh, my, I quite often say that the path that Lahti as a city has now taken is, is nothing special. All cities in Europe and the world must follow the same path. The only decision we have, we have made and done is that we move forward. We move faster than we had to do yeah. and, and try to find an edge by doing that. And, and, and so far, so good. We are, we never felt, I think people of Latin never dreamt uh, 10, 20 years ago that today in 2021, we are the European green capital and one of the leading environmental cities in Europe. Well, Pika, you're very humble, like most Finnish people I have met, but you're very inspiring and you've achieved so much by being forward thinking. So thank you for taking the time. We can't wait to meet you in Belfast. And I think Martin would probably like to say a word to you yeah, as well. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Kitos, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're very proud of Tina. She has the coolest job in Belfast is to be the honorary Consul General of Finland. Yeah. 
And uh, so we're, we, all, we all look forward to her bringing us with her to Lakthi. Mm. But we have a question for you, because we really want you to come here for MTAC Europe 2022, but will you bring the Pelicans with you to play our Belfast Giants? I, I can ask them, yes. They are an excellent ice hockey team. Though. So we start the process today. Wow. And, and I would be delighted to see, see you in Belfast. And also, uh, one of our things, what we have learned, that doing things together is a very powerful method. So sharing, mm -hmm. uh, collaborating, and doing things together, that, that works good for the cities uh, who want to move forward. Well, look, thank you. And that, that is the entire philosophy of the Belfast Giants. Now, they wouldn't be good enough to play the Pelicans' first team, but we, yeah. we, they'd certainly play the second team. But look, th thank you very much. Tina, well, you can finish off. Tina, thank you. Thank, well, you, thank you again, Pika. And we can't wait to have you here in Belfast for our next get together. And we're so looking forward to what else we can do quickly as a city to get on with it and, and reach some of the goals that you already have. So thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me, and, and I also want everyone to enjoy this beautiful summer. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Tina, thank you very much. Uh, thank you to, to Tina uh, McKenzie, CEO of Staffline, Honorary Consul General of Finland in Belfast, and uh, that was a wonderful interview with uh, Mayor Paka Timonen of Lakti, uh, and that, that is quite uh, an honour to have to be Europe's green capital 2021, and the story of Lakti is absolutely fantastic.